Hi friends, welcome back to the Yiskar Scribe, and if you are not aware, I made a reaction, an entire series of reaction videos on the Jubilee, Can You Stop Being Gay? Now, I recently have reviewed a commentary that is outside of Jubilee. I have reviewed the Jubilee clip, Samuel Perez, as well, and um, the LGBTQ team recap video. I've also linked those in the description of the most of the videos on the playlist that you can find online. Today I'm going to be talking about my reaction as a whole to the video that was released by Samuel Perez. And this video goes out to those content creators that have made them. I want to really just bring my sense as someone who is a millennial. I think that a lot of them are younger than 27. So I'm just bringing my experience to the table as someone who um, has been a gay rights activist. I've been in the occult as well. I was on my way to becoming a wizard. And um, most of you probably don't know me. The only one that I've actually followed um, for any length of time is Samuel. And so he is one of the first people that I've come across that started talking about their content and really um, their story. What I find that is biased, and I really do believe that there's a lot of redeemable things, um, is the fact that your content in your video truly does focus on deliverance ministry. It doesn't focus on church history and other things. Matter of fact, whenever you make the statements you all do, you really talk about emotionalism and experientialism. And there's really not a lot of studies or content that talk about what the struggles look like in your life. And I feel that because this happens, I don't think that it's really, really helpful across the board. I think that a lot of these things that people do and say, they can inspire people. And I think a lot of you will touch and inspire people, as you have said, as um, one of your members in that video that you have recently released. I believe that they talked for nearly 80% or more of the film um, of the clip on YouTube. And because of that, I don't think it gives a well-roundedness to the entire conversation. When we talk about these things, we have to remember that not everything's a demon. And I think that you guys really stress that experientialism and that aspect of demonology too much. You don't talk about the areas of your life where you talk about the depression, the suicide, the um, areas that, that didn't make you happy in the LGBTQ, the issues that you solve. You lightly touch on areas of orgies and other things, and you talk about a marriage, but you don't actually go into depth at what those things brought you in your personal life and what those literally were like and how they compared outside the gospel. I think the most important thing to realize is that not everybody that makes content that is ex-gay or former LGBTQ, has a relationship with Christ or comes from a Christian perspective. I think it's really hopeful and helpful that you did actually bring up people that are Islamic and that are in that Muslim tradition. They don't necessarily believe the same as progressives. All in all, I like I have posted in my videos, that I encourage you each to respond to as I've made four, and I will be making a video that addresses each of the individuals in the upcoming shorts that are, well, on my playlist on YouTube and TikToks that will go through each of the members of Can You Stop Being Gay that are on both sides. I'll make a video for each of you, and I would love to hear your response to them. There's one person that I don't really care for in them. And I believe that they are promoting a form of um, theology that promotes very harmful therapy, and that would be Mr. Brandon. I've been very outspoken against him publicly because of the actions that he has done to um, effectively erase ex-gay individuals and in our experience in former LGBTQ. I believe that he targets the bisexual community and the transsexual community by the comments that he makes. Because if our experience isn't like his, then obviously it's not as valid. And I've also openly condemned Candace's statement for saying, how the fuck am I supposed to hug them? I think overall that is very not professional to do and lacks credibility if you claim to be a therapist. But my video right now is actually engaging you for on your platforms. And really, I would encourage you to respond to the things that I have posted very openly. And I've tried to be very careful. 
again, each of you have several different points that you have made, and I will be making videos on each of you. So look forward to that. I'd love to get a reaction video for you and to maybe, if you want, to have further conversations. In light of that, because I am older and I graduated high school in 2008, yeah, 2008, I think, 2008, yes, I really was around before a lot of the things that you all experienced. I was kind of in the throttle of x -Gate International or Exodus International, which you guys didn't talk about that. You didn't talk about conversion therapy. You didn't talk about reparative therapy. And nor did you talk about people who did not take part in Exodus International, because I don't feel as someone who used to be involved in gay rights that you all have the experience in that area. So if you like the content I do and you like the videos, then please talk about them, use them for your platforms. And they're meant to be thought provoking. In light of that, I also think that you do a disservice to people like myself making the journey where you make claims and statements of people have different journeys but make everything based on how delivered they get. I would encourage you all to really research NAR ideology and theology. A great book that I recommend for all people is Counterfeit Kingdom that has been re written on this ideology. Um, I don't think you are part of NAR, but I think it adds to this conversation of deliverance ministry and demons. I believe that there are demons in this world. I believe that they do change people. But I also believe that people make a willful decision on the lives that they make because they just want to do it. And we are led astray by our own desires. When we talk about preaching the gospel, we also have to do it persuasively and with sound reasoning. Dialectics in the Greek that are talked about are actually dialectics done with soundness of mind and great discourse. And Paul even talked about this in the New Testament. A lot of the framework that you present is actually not very understanding the Jewish theological framework that Paul himself supported. I also think that not all the claims that you all make are really backed by all theology. I think it is really rooted in Christianity that is rooted in one of the three areas, non-denominationalism, charismatic doctrine, and Pentecostalism. And because of that, I don't think that it really addresses all issues. It might be true of the aspects of prayer, intercession, and divine revelation and experience. But a lot of the terms that you will use, unless somebody has a degree like myself, people are just simply not going to understand. And it doesn't really help necessarily to have a church service, which is what I believe you all actually had on your YouTube channel. I think if you're going to be talking about your testimonies, then maybe don't label it in the manner that you guys did. You really didn't go through the things individually. You didn't go through the really the hardships or the things that really made you not be gay anymore or choose abstinence or you're no longer attracted or marriage. You talked very for a long period of time. You talked very much so about the message of the gospel. I'm not going to shame you for talking about the gospel. I'm not going to shame you about the hope found in Christ or the redemption or giving up temptation or lust or the likes. I will, however, be outspoken that if you are going to make a reaction video, then maybe you stop telling about your testimony per se and actually talk about the legitimate things that you ran into. What were the issues that you faced in the gay culture? By specific, what do you mean about nasty comments and other things? Because you don't do this, I feel like it doesn't actually add to the conversation. And I agree with the actually the recap team of the LGBTQ. I don't believe that you all have actually looked into this area and you are mostly talking about your unique experiences without actually looking at psychological studies or history or history of the ex-gay movement or other size outside of Exodus International, I'm talking about hundreds and thousands of years. Try looking at the pseudo claims of history or the pseudo psychological claims that were listed inside of the Jubilethum. Those things are more heavily. I recently have come out and stated about DTT and IDTS syndrome, which I believe is what is going on with progressive theologians. Progressive leaders are using these type of tactics to ensnare people by emotionalism and rapidly affirming their sexual drive to only be acceptable in the condition that matches their experience. A very similar thing that is what you guys are doing with all respect. 
Follow me for more. My name is Shannon, a previous gay rights activist, and together we can make the world a more peaceful place. See you next time.